Uh, we hear so much about this America first strategy the president is a proponent of. Does that close or open markets? Does, does, does a, the president's perspective on the world change how you approach investing at all? It does. Um, I, I mean, I'll give you an example. Sure. It, it really, uh, one of the things we picked up after the election um, was that the tone in Europe changed. Um, and I'm sure other people have said this, but what you've seen is a conscious effort by the EU decision makers to work to make Europe the sort of the stable center of More the world. More cohesive, yeah. Yeah, very cohesive. So every, we added some risk in Greece, for example. I would expect Greek equities to be one of the best performers in the next little while because Europe has to present itself as cohesive and strong and unified on the back of, you know, not a lot of stability elsewhere in the world. Um, Trump's America first, I mean, you know, my personal view on this is uh, the U.S. has been a leader and we don't appear to be one now. Um, so to the extent that we're concerned about having sort of, you know, you talk to, I talked to my diplomat friends and it used to be in the past that they would always look at what the U.S. was going to do before committing themselves. That's becoming less the case. So what we might be doing is accelerating a transition in the world that would have happened anyway, where, you know, America is a player, but not the player. Let me ask you about uh, one country in particular. Let me ask about Brazil, okay. uh, where, again, the, the leader of that country is under scrutiny for deals you may or may not have done. In any event, you have more political upheaval there. When does that become normal? Are you able to see through events like that? Uh, can, you, can you look past that and see the technicals when there is all of that uncertainty surrounding political leadership? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's our game in emerging yeah. markets. And, you know, the whole broad thing of, you know, how do you use geopolitical instability or stability as a way to influence investment decisions, that is how you invest in emerging markets. If you invest in emerging markets by looking balance sheets, you're probably not going to get it right. Yeah. You have to get a sense of who's making decisions and why. In Brazil, um, yes, you can look through it. I mean, three to five years down the road, I think we're really optimistic on Brazil because it's the one corruption scandal that we've seen in the emerging markets that doesn't seem to be politically motivated. Mm -hmm. This is a you know, one pillar of the establishment standing up and not being influenced. The judiciary is leading this. Now, unfortunately, any politician that has any standing in Brazil is probably part of the corruption mm -hmm. because that's just the way it's been. But if this is a long-term, you know, cleansing of the system, that's very beneficial. Short term, it's going to create some waves. But I've spoken to a number of my Brazilian friends who are sort of standing back and saying, okay, when this clears, we're going to be far better off. Uh -huh. 